Hi, Soul Family. We've got guests. The crows are here. Hmm. They're going to hang out with us, it looks like, because that's where we're going. So I was sitting at home, and uh, everyone's having a party. Ooh. I, look, I think I see a red hawk up ahead. Everyone's having a party. Oh, I got to go. Which way do I go? It's different every time. Um, they're all having a party because it's Memorial Day weekend, right? And love your truck, bro. I hate loud vehicles. Okay, so I decided that, um, I don't know, it's like 5.30 in the afternoon, and I was sitting at my desk, and I was working, and I wasn't actually working at that time. I was waiting for calls to come in, right? On my, uh, my work line. I work on a psychic hotline, Keen. Anyway, and uh, I was listening to a video. I don't know what the video was, and I wasn't actually paying attention. But a video came up afterwards, and it was my video. And it was, oh, I know why it was. Somebody left a comment on the video that I posted the other day that was quite, was it yesterday? <laughs> quite emotional. And, uh, yes. And um, so I... I, I responded to it and then the video um, when I left it I went to do something else and then it started playing again because when you respond it stops the video from playing hmm interesting message so I'll let you guys look around I was listening to myself and it's funny because I listened to the video yesterday and I heard things and in the in the night last night before I went to sleep I used to always say my twin used to say to me um, dream sweet and make it lucid right because we dream together and so I said that to him last night dream sweet and make it lucid and they were and I dreamed and dreamed and I woke up and I'd go to the bathroom and I dream and I go back to sleep I went back to sleep and dreamed and dreamed because I would dream and then write down my dreams and then I you know go back to sleep I didn't wake up until 1 45 this afternoon <laughs> clearly this body needed rest but I had four or five lucid dreams, detailed dreams. And I was like, wow, okay, I asked for lucidity and I got it, right? So I'm listening to my reading and I'm hearing messages that I'm getting from my dreams. And I, I wanna reiterate some things um, because, well, first of all, I thought to myself, um, I gotta go for a hike, I gotta go to Fallbrook because Fallbrook is the only place that has the Santa Mar Margarita River Trail, right? This is where I have water, I'm trying to get to water. And there's no water and I and I'm looking at the clock and I'm looking at the, the clouds coming over from the beach like it looks like the the May May gray is there right the June gloom the May gray creeping over the mountains and I thought by the time I get there it's gonna be cold it's gonna be dark so where do I go spirit where do I go and I looked up right then and it said Bundy Canyon Road and when I came back to California I landed in this place and it's called the farm and it's funny because this is where my twin came and met me for the first time. Now, I was not in this little area here. I was living over on the other side. It's funny. He looked at the place and he's like, what are you doing here? This is beneath you. And I'm telling you, I liked it. I would go hiking across and I would end up in this little area. This is really sad that they haven't done this again. It's just been, it used to be obviously pools and waterfalls, right? It would be so beautiful to have this. It would be gorgeous to have that as your own property. And I would hike through from my side where I was right next to the little duck pond and they had all the water birds. I always loved the water birds. And I hiked through up over um, through the bushes and I ended up here. And I thought, oh, I love this. I like being in the forest. And this was kind of like forest to me. These are great oak trees. And there's a giant um, dragon here in this tree. Let's see if I can find it. The first time I climbed it. There he is. Now I've got to see it better. Oh, there's his head because now he's got green hair. Do you see him? Let me go up close. Now it's a she. It's a she, because there's her bust. So see the little branch? Well, right above that is the hair, and there's her head and her nose, and she's beautiful. She's a beautiful dragon. But there was another dragon. I saw more. Anyway, I would come here, and I would sit. This used to be an amphitheater. Oh my gosh, they've broken things down since I was here. Looks like they're changing things. People would sit here, and I guess they would have little concerts and stuff anyway oh my gosh my tree you guys they broke my tree see how they've cut it down maybe they are going to do this again because something has changed here they are they've cut my tree down I used to sit on this tree and I always wanted to climb higher 
and I couldn't and I kept trying to do it and I said they're probably gonna cut it so kids can't do it oh look at see where it broke right there it broke off okay they didn't cut it it broke Wow well that's where I always wanted to go so I heard um, as I'm driving down the freeway where do I go and I got I saw Bundy Canyon Road and I thought home now remember in my video the other day when I was in Sedona I was saying how I kept asking spirit where to go and they said go home and so I went to my upper my home in Sedona my upper um, the house up in upper Sedona it's kind of cold in here and uh, when I was listening to the video this afternoon I listened to um, the next video that popped up and it was when I was climbing the mountains in Sedona and that's when I was saying how interesting when I asked spirit where to go they they said go home but then when I was climbing in the mountains I recalled the story and I told you guys how I had a sacred cave in Sedona and the last time I had gone not this last time but the last time um, I had gone to Sedona I always had gone um, every single time I went I would go to my cave right that's my sacred cave and I heard this time Spirit said to me pick up your staff and take it home my I had a heart a giant heart it's on my patio right now I don't know where to sit you guys I think we'll go over there so I thought wow and then I walked out and they said you know, I had a staff there and I had a heart there and I would I was told the time before I was told the time before now I'm gonna be blind to pick it up and take it up pick up a staff pick up your heart and, and bring it up into the cave so that your twin can journey there so that's what I did then when I went back and I had gone back again and again and every time I went back no one had disturbed it the heart was there the staff was there right so that in our dream time he could go and be energetically where I was with my energy and so um, when I got up into my cave the cave had been tagged so somebody had they'd found it and it wasn't sacred any longer they had literally carved their initials and painted into the back of my cave which was really sad so I was told to go home and I said I guess that means that my my stay in Sedona that's not my home any longer made me really sad so I'm thinking huh okay yesterday I was saying how spirit said to go home and that was upper Sedona and then yesterday in the video with you guys I was I, I realized that I was part of the Hopi tribe in my past life and my twin grew up on the Navajo reservation in Page Arizona so we're both right there right and so it made sense to me that when I asked spirit where should I go they said go home so I felt like Sedona was the home but then I listened to those right so what's the common denominator between all of the, of the videos and all the things that I was saying that I'm supposed to go home it's my twin it's my twin wherever my twin is is home to me it doesn't matter where we are that's home go home so connect is basically what I was telling me I just bit my cheek this is still frozen so look at those beautiful oaks so what I wanted to talk to you about um, that I heard in the videos as well was I was listening to the reading um, a few readings back where it talked about the sacred um, sacred union right the coming together of the twin souls and I was talking about how in that message we were supposed to listen to what we felt when we had a decision that was going to be put upon us we had to ask ourselves how does it feel it had nothing to do with what we logically are supposed to do it has nothing to do with what other people expect us to do it has nothing to do with what we think we're supposed to do it's all about how we feel how does it feel and so I was thinking about um, what I was shown in my dreams last night and how does it feel and as I'm um, and when I was given the opportunity to get the because remember we have opportunities that were about to come to us remember yesterday that's what we got so in the opportunity when we consider it we aren't supposed to actually think about what our intuition tells us we aren't actually supposed to think about what other people tell us and it's not even supposed to be what's logical it has to do what with what feels right and I was talking about how I felt like I had a missed opportunity and I lost the Hacienda house right and I mean everything happens for a reason but I have to tell you guys the truth when I got home even though as I walked through the mountains and I told you guys I pay attention to my animal messengers they mean a lot to me I, I listen to them because that is spirit talking to me right so when I was in the mountain the day before when I was climbing we brought up several different totem messengers the beaver um, the warthog the 
um, there was that deer, that special deer, right? It was like a, it was like a buffalo of a type, of, a type of buffalo or antelope. It was a type of antelope. And then I went down to the hacienda house, and one by one, I was seeing all of those same messengers everywhere. Beaver. Um, the Javelina Trail was the road that I turned on to get to the house, and then I saw the um, the yellow Orioles, and they all the messages were saying, "Just do it, just go for it." But I'm not the only one watching my videos, right? And I'm I'm videotaping and I'm talking and I'm giving these messages, but I'm listening to these messengers. So to me, everything felt like because of what my animal messengers were showing me, that even though I I wanted something different. Every sign was pointing to this, to do this. And yet when I got home, I, I had a really hard time sleeping that night. I was scared. I was scared of taking that place. It was a beautiful place, but at the moment I was scared. Now sometimes it's proper for us to move ahead even if we're scared, right? Because things that are new and then that are challenging and that are different sometimes are frightening to us, right? But I couldn't shake the feeling this fear and I had a psychic attack in the middle of the night remember and I said if I had had this and I was out there all alone I don't know anybody if anything happened to my cats my cats are both senior cats that are special needs cats there's nowhere for me to go there was no one for me to call I was out and I just felt what I was feeling was fear and it wasn't just like oh this is nervous you know fear and a little uncomfortable no I was afraid so I, sh and yet I, so I told him no the next day and I felt really good about it. It was like a relief. I told him no. And then I thought about it and then I thought, you know, maybe I just scared myself and blah, blah. And I doubled back. And the point was spirit keeps telling me, even though your spirit guides will tell you, you know, this is what should happen or here are the messages. But sometimes we misread our messages, right? We have to pay attention to how it makes us feel. Our feelings are our guidance, right? And I talked about how my guides will say, we would like you to do this. We would like you to do that. Well, being in a twin soul relationship, my guides, as in my mom and my grandma and my sister, they don't want me waiting around for anybody. They want me to go on with my life. And I'm not supposed to wait. None of us are supposed to wait. But they want me to move on, right? And yet I said, I made a soul contract before I came here. And my guides have nothing to do with that. That's my contract and I get to make my choice. And so that's when I say to my guides, look, this is my choice. I'm asking you to help me achieve this goal. So it's about how you feel, not about what you think you should do, not about if you would let someone down or this would hurt somebody else's feelings. It's about how you feel. How does it make you feel to do this or to not do this, okay? So then I'm driving along and I'm thinking, okay, it's getting late to get to this place. And I, and I said, where should I go? I can't go that far. Where should I go? And I looked up and I saw Bundy Canyon. So I turned down Bundy Canyon. Now my twin and I, I told you guys yesterday, I fell in love with a hippie having a garage sale in his friend's backyard. Well, it was just right down the road from here. I didn't realize where I was when I landed in this place. And uh, somebody was sending me directions to go somewhere and they said, well, you can go out the back end of Bundy Canyon. It turns into Scott Road. And I'm like, what? Scott Road, that's where so-and-so lives. That's where my twin was there with me, right? So I wrote to him and I said, oh my God, does so-and-so still live there? And he was just like, no, he's with his girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. But it was the first communication we had had in a really long time was because he thought I was going there. And I'm like, I had no intention of seeing that guy. I, I was thinking about him, right? But I was so close in proximity. And so I felt this tug when I saw that Bundy Canyon. It felt like I was going home. And I'm gonna get emotional because this isn't home to me, but his energy is home to me. And that's when I connected with him, was there. And this is the one spot that I keep being pulled to energetically. He has a property over here, I know that. I feel it. So I came here, and as I'm driving down the road, there's a, there's a kindergarten that somebody runs in there. It's like, a, it's like a preschool, that's what it is. And they run out of their property, and it's called Llama. Or, or I don't know what it's called, but the animal is a llama, the totem. So, of course, I, I have to pay attention to what the totem animal is saying to me. So the totem animal is definitely speaking about me. It's talking about, well, it's telling you that perseverance and endurance are the only things that are going to get you through to what it is that you want, what you're trying to get. And it's talking about um, people that, that carry the llama totem, they carry the weight of the world upon their shoulders. They feel this responsibility. 
And yet they're saying, you don't have to carry the weight of the world upon your shoulders. Let spirit help. So I said, okay, you help me. You help me. And so I, I was guided here. And also, I'm going to post it with this, this, this reading. Um, I really wanted to hike and I wanted to climb rocks and I wanted to be in water. And look, can I climb these rocks? Is there any water? There's nothing here. That's why I like Sedona. I can get out of my house and I can freaking climb. There's nothing to climb and there's no water. There's nothing. Oh, it's frustrating. But I'm in amongst the forest and the trees. That's another thing I like. Okay, so maybe you're not going to get everything you want, right? But what are you drawn to, Sherry? Every single time, what are you drawn to? The trees. I'm always drawn to the trees. I love, I grew up in the trees. And I can't get to Idlewild yet. The road's closed unless I have to go a back way, which is ours. So I was looking at the animal totem of, of the, the llama. And it was saying how there's certain specific messages that the llama is saying to you. So if you see the llama totem, and clearly this is a message because you're getting it, you're watching this video. It says that in this situation, you need to listen to your heart. You need to come from your heart center. This, this situation that you're dealing with is a very delicate situation. And you have to come from a place of love, of caring, of gentleness, of... And that's what the video was yesterday, right? It isn't about saving face. It isn't about what looks good. It isn't about, oh, you know, no one wants to hear anything about my twin soul. I don't care. This is my life right? You're getting messages out of this. But for me, my priority is to help you, yes, but also to help my twin and I come together, our union, right? And this situation says you speak your truth. You come from your heart. You come from your feelings. You come from your gut. What is your gut telling you? Forget what everybody else is telling you. Forget what is appropriate. Forget what you should do or, or what is, you know, um, what's popular or um, I don't know, whatever, whatever the excuses or whatever the arguments that come up that would stop you from expressing your truth, don't. Now, the llama, if you're a llama person, you know where you're going. You're focused on an end goal and nothing is gonna get in your way. Nothing is gonna stop you from going after that. That's just how we, we understand things. I focus on that, that's my goal. I'm. My beacon is, is directed to that. That's it. And that's just the way we feel things have to be, right? That's how we operate. And we're focused on a goal. And whatever that goal is, I mean, it's a very Aries totem, totem as well. I mean, that, I mean, at message as well. That's what we're like. We're just like tunnel vision. We go to it and it's important to us, right? So I don't know why I'm saying this. Maybe people just need to understand that. And I brought the same decks that we used the other day. I think I'll put you up this way because this is prettier. And I want to see the messages that come out because it's, as I listened to the videos today, I felt this overwhelming urgency to go back and reiterate how important it is that when making our decisions about whatever it is, if it feels bad, it is bad. If it feels good, it is good. It doesn't mean, oh, well, it feels good to, you know, I mean, you can, you can take that in a, in a wrong way as well, right? You're married and that girl's hot or that guy's hot. It feels good. I want to go there. I like the attention. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if like that, that taking that house, this is a major decision for me, right? And I felt fear. I felt scared. I had to listen. I had to honor my reasons. And it doesn't matter if spirit thinks that, you know, oh, well, this is good for you. You need to learn how to, I'm done with being alone. I was isolating myself out there, right? So we have to be careful. I got a message from my twin this morning and it said, there's a, there's a rat in your company. There's a rat in your company. And then they pointed to the mother and I thought, wow. And the mother is in quotes, right? So the mother company, the mother business, the mother, who is the mother to you? And so I looked up rat totem because I, I posted it this morning. One of my clients that I talked to this morning said to me, you know, rat came up and I've, I've got to look up and see what that means. And so twice, right? So I'm like, okay, pay attention. Go and look at the rat totem. Now it's funny because if you say, oh, there's a rat, there's a rat, a rat, somebody who, who calls you out or who turns you in or who, um, who's hiding in your, in your midst and they're like a mole, right? That's a rat or whatever. Someone's going to rat you out, tell on you, right? It could be a negative. And so when I saw and I heard for my spiritual twin, there's a rat in your company. 
you need to investigate this. So I look up the rat totem and I'm looking at it and it's actually very positive. Now what's funny is, and I, and I put it in the post as well, often in my dreams, I'm called the mother to my twin because of my protective nurturing love towards him. I'm very protective of him, I love him. I, I, I don't want to see him hurt, right? And if anyone is out to hurt him, I'm like the mama bear. And I kept getting too, mama bear protection, right? And so we have to be really careful about how we understand the messages that we get, me included, right? Because for a long time, I thought his mother hurt him. His mother was in interfering. Now, did you hear that? The crow came right then. For a long time, I was really upset about that. And yet when he spoke about her, he didn't seem to be feeling that way about her. He had really good feelings about her. And when I looked at her picture, I felt really good energy about her. I just felt, I felt like she was so much like me. And so then who does the mother represent? Well, the mother could be like your mother company. Um, or is it you, Sherry? Who is it? Or is it there's somebody in his life that's a mother? There's a rat in the midst. So the message is, how does that information make you feel as you investigate it? Now, investigate everything. Because the message about the rat totem was actually there's a lot of positive messages about the rat. People think a rat is a bad guy, right? Oh, he's a rat. I happen to know that there is a rat that is a really good guy, right? So we have to be very careful. And this is a message to myself. I have to be really careful. Well, who is that speaking about? Someone that hurt him? Or is it you? Or is it as a mom that he loves so much, right? I don't know. We'll have to see. But it's like very, very important when you get information that it can be read in very many different ways. So we have to, if we're not sure about something, we wait and we ask and we get confirmation. So if we get more and more information coming on this subject, you'll know what it is. Okay? So, I don't know. I just had this really overwhelming urge. I had to go. Like, go now. Go now. You've got to tell them. So, we're going to start. We're using Crystal Oracle by Tony Carmine Salerno. And we're using the Magdalene Oracle by also Tony Carmine Salerno. I love crystals. They're very, they're very important to me. And uh, there's a lot of power in just the crystals themselves, right? So when we do get a message about these crystals, and if, sorry, you guys are looking at a drainage ditch. Now that, you know, there's probably a reason for that, right? I thought I was pointing you in that direction. So I thought I was pointing you in the trees and I heard family tree. I thought I was pointing you towards the family tree, but what I was looking at was a drainage ditch that's all covered in cobwebs. That looks like an escape route. It's where water would come through, but there's no water coming through it now. Water is a motion, so there's, it's not being used. That's a place that I would explore as a little girl. Like I'm looking at that. I'm, I'm all about caves, right? Woo! Everything's spilling. Everything's spilling. Spill your truth, I just heard. Spill your truth, that's okay. You can pick it up. So, as a little girl, this would have been somewhere I would have gone. I would have gone in there, for sure. Now I know that there's probably animals in there. That's their little travel way, right? The, the coyotes probably go through there. But I thought I was pointing you at the family tree. But I wasn't, I was pointing at that. That's an escape route. So a rat would come out of there and look at the size of that spider. See that spider? Holy granola. Okay, I, I need to see what kind of spider that is. It's wrapping up its prey. Yep, it's wrapping up that prey right there. It was feeding. So daddy long legs, where there's one you'll find another. That's really interesting because I didn't know that they ate other bugs. I guess it's the, um, it's the one that's similar to this. Okay, now there, there's the message. The one that's similar to this is the crane fly. The crane fly looks like a daddy long legs, but it doesn't eat other animals. How interesting. It doesn't even have the ability. It doesn't have a mouth. So it's one that looks very much like the other. Ooh. And the, and the spider always represents the mother. So this, this escape route, the rat, is the mother. That's what they're showing. Okay. So I would say one that looks very much like the, like the other, the daddy long legs, is the crane fly. Now the crane, you speak about the crane people, that's us, the spiritual people, right? The ones who dance to their own, own beat, 
uh, the ones who do things, we see an opportunity when others don't. We're able to grasp the opportunity and make something of it. We are the weird ones, the eclectic ones, the ones on the outside edge. That's daddy long legs. I mean, that's um, crane fly, not daddy long legs. It's not daddy long legs. Okay, the crane fly is the one who's not harming anyone. I thought I was pointing you to the family tree, but to the great oak where the dragon lives, right? That beautiful dragon lives in the trees. But I wasn't, I was actually facing the camera to where that spider, which also represents mother, was wrapping up its prey in a place where water was not expressed, emotion was not expressed. That one did not express love. That looked like an escape route. I'm escaping from that. There's, there's, there's all kinds of, the coyotes I said would come through there, right? The coyote is the trickster, but the coyote is also a Mexican gang banger, gang runner. So the coyotes, but that would be their escape route. That's how they would travel through without being seen. And all around the entrance to that, where you see one, you'll see another. And they're wrapping up their prey. I'm just going to, I'm just, this just came, right? So we're just going to go with it. So the mother who lives in the trees, the dragon, now I'm a dragon, so it's not me, because I am a dragon. I'm, I'm an Aries dragon. And Merlin, my twin, is a dragon fish. And the one that lives in the trees, the beautiful one, my twin is beautiful, right? I'm not pointing to that one. I'm not pointing to that rat. I told you there's a rat that's a good guy. That's that one. That one is not a good person. That one is wrapping up their prey. That one. Wow, so many messages. So let me point you up in the, in the nice direction. How can I do this? We'll go this way. Gosh. Now, the thing is, I might have my own thoughts, right, about that. I don't know, I, I know what I'm hearing. But there may be other things that come to it as well later. And I'll hear things later, like I always do. I just have to go with what I see, right? I said to myself, what did I see, you guys? Wow, that's somewhere I would like to go. I would like to explore that, right? When I was a little kid, I would like to go there. So is that what happened? When someone was a little kid, did they go somewhere and get wrapped up and caught by that spider? That was somewhere that they were playing, something that they were exploring, and they got caught. They were someone's prey not part of their family someone else that looked and there's a hummingbird right there you guys probably can't see anything but the movement but it's in the air right there there it is the hummingbird said you will accomplish what seems impossible those are magic 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 you will accomplish it and it might feel impossible to you as well as others but you will accomplish it you're simply magic in motion now, I'll have to think back or listen back when I do this reading or listen to this reading. I always edit it so that I can hear other things and understand what I was saying right then. So if somebody went in to discover somewhere as a little kid, that looked like a fun place to play, but it wasn't. I became someone's prey. That's the message. I understand that I already know that and that's a message for some of you. When someone was a child, they went somewhere to play. They thought it would be fun for them, but they weren't. It wasn't, it, they were someone's prey and they were hurt. And it was someone who looked like, it's someone who looked like the crane fly. It was Daddy Longlegs. It wasn't the real family. They were wrapped up in, and they were somebody's prey and I knew that and fuck you, fuck you. You'll get your karma. It happened to me too. So what I'm hearing is sexual abuse and it's not okay ever. And you know what? Sometimes it takes so many years before something comes to light and so many years before it's dealt with, but it can destroy people for many, 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 many years until they face it. And often they don't want to face it because it's too painful and it causes them to push away love because of what happened to them. They don't trust it because they were trusting once. And look what happened to them, right? They were trusting. They thought this one looks like, it looks like me. This was a man who molested a child. Someone who looks like me. Wow. And that's why this situation 
is so delicate and you don't come from a place of anger and you don't come from a place of judgment you come from a place of love and you speak your truth and you you go with what you're feeling sometimes what looks good is dangerous right sometimes what feels good is dangerous so think about that I don't know if I can trust my feelings I thought I could trust that I thought I was safe there but I wasn't safe there so why should I feel safe with you because I love you and I understand and I've had that same thing happen to me and the difference between you and I is I let everyone know I fought and I screamed and I went kicking and I ran and told everybody some people don't my daughter was molested my whole family has been molested all of the women in my family have been molested and it has to stop the, the silence and, and feeling shamed has to stop. It is not your shame. It is their shame. And when you face it and you look at it, they no longer have control over you. But as long as you allow them to keep you in a place of fear and you push away intimacy, they are, they are holding their power over you. And they are winning every single day of their life and you are losing every single day of your life. So you take your power back and you say, fuck you, I'm not a little child anymore, you can't hurt me, and I'm not gonna let you ruin my life and push away love, love that my soul is longing for because of what you did to me. But sometimes we don't even understand what we're doing. It happened so long ago and it causes us to shut down, right? But you're safe. You are safe up there. You stay away from people like that, energetically. Ask spirit to help you feel the energy. How does it feel around that person? Do I feel good? When I'm with that person, I might, do I feel like I'm at home? Do I feel comfortable? See, it's the thing. I was told all kinds of things about my twin, but I gotta tell you, whenever he's with me, whenever I have been with him, I felt safe. I told you I would trust him with my life. I felt safe in his company. I can tell you who I don't feel good around. I'm reading your energy, right? So pay attention to your gut. This came up for a reason. All right, so what we're gonna use is we're gonna use the dragon. You guys saw the dragon, that's one item. We're gonna use the, um, the amphitheater. Okay, that's two. We're gonna use the dried out waterways. I look at this and I don't see this as sad. I see this as I could, I could fix this up. I could make this beautiful again. And that's what I say about that. That could be cleaned out. Water, that will be cleaned out, washed away. Water will come through there and this will be made beautiful again. This is a beautiful place. There's nothing wrong with this place. It's like that person. There's nothing wrong with you. It's what happened before and it's ancient history. There's cobwebs, but it's still holding you fast. So transform this scene into something different, right? Make this beautiful again because there's nothing wrong. It's just like there's nothing wrong with this planet. It's just the fucked up people on this planet that are ruining it. We have to come from a place of love. This situation is very delicate. The situation requires truth and love and feeling and understanding and empathy, right? Sometimes it's harder for other people to move on. I'm not like you, right? Maybe you came into this world as super sensitive, like my twin did. He came into this world super sensitive. I did too, but I went back to sleep when I was about, what, 11 years old because my stepfather came into the family and it wasn't safe for me. Spirit, my higher self knew it wasn't safe for me to have those gifts. Well, what am I saying right now? When the stepfather came into the family, it was no longer safe for this one, this daddy long legs that was there, right? There's a wish going by. Do you see it now? You're gonna have to see it go over you probably, I, I often say that to you guys and, and it's not visible. There it is right there. So when it goes by the dark, it might drop down again. So what, when I was pointing down and I was saying that, that place that wasn't safe, right? When the, when the stepfather came into the family, I was no longer safe. A wish went flying by. So my wish is that you no longer have control over this one. You no longer are able to come from and instill your fear, inflict your pain upon this one. That wish went running away from you. It went flying away. It was like, you no longer hold power over me. You no longer, you, you stay amongst your kind. What was interesting is where you see one, you'll see another. They were all there, right? In that dangerous place. That one probably had been molested by his father and by his father. And then, they, and, then, and then what happens is they start out as, as um, a victim. And instead of taking that and, and turning it around and saying, I'm not going to let you have power over me, they have now turned and become a victimizer to another. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't let that one warp you. 
because you can victimize other people by the way you treat them right you can be mean to them you can be isolated from you can cut them off you you're, you don't want to be hurt again so you lash out and you hurt them so you have now become a victimizer and in some cases you'll be you'll do what they did to you right and and so for me I take my experiences and I use them and I help other people with what has happened to me. You can look at what happened to your life and you can realize there's nothing for me to be ashamed of. I've done nothing wrong. You messed up my mind for a long time. You caused a lot of things for me to do a lot of things that caused me a lot of pain. And in doing so in my life as I grew up, I was causing pain to other people, pushing them away, being mean, using them, saying, you know, I'll take it and, and I'll push you off. And But it, it's because I was trying to defend myself, trying to keep myself safe. I wasn't going to let my heart get involved. But in doing so, I was hurting other people. But if it eventually gets to the place where you realize and you wake up and you, you think, you know what, okay, I can't beat myself up about what, I, what has happened in the past. I have now become enlightened. I now realize I'll take my lessons and I'll, I'll speak about them publicly and I can help other people. I can help other people and in doing so I help myself. Okay, I gotta start with this. So we've got the dragon, we've got the waterway, we've got the, what did I say you guys, good lord. The waterway, the dragon, did I say the grove? No, I said the amphitheater, right? So the waterway, the amphitheater, the dragon, and the hummingbird, okay? So for those who chose the hummingbird, and I did. Woo! Okay, we're not using that deck. I tried to use the um, Crystal Oracle, and it completely was fighting. It, it didn't want to shuffle. Okay, I don't want to face him. Now that's a message. I don't want to face him. Is that a message? I don't want to face him. It's hard for me to face him. Right? This person was obviously somebody in a position of authority. Right? I don't want to face him. You know what, in all instances, you don't have to face somebody. If it's gonna feel bad to you, if it's gonna hurt you and upset you, you don't have to. But I gotta tell you, it's empowering if you can. And there could be a trial, you know, there could be. A lot of times that happens. My daughter wasn't able to help the police. She wouldn't say what happened to her. The person that did that to her would have gone to jail for certain because he admitted it to me later, but he lied to the police. So because my daughter wouldn't testify, he got away. All he got was five, what did he get? Five years probation. He wasn't allowed to leave the country. And then what else did he get? Five years he wasn't allowed to leave the country and like an $1,800 fine. It would have been five years in jail if she, or more if she had been, she was just a little girl, right? It's too much to ask of someone. It's a very brave thing, you know, and I've been kept getting this message for the longest time. This is fast turned into sexual abuse this whole this whole reading but I've been getting this for such a long time I mean I said my mother was my grandmother was my daughter was I was it was all the females right and my daughter just told me the other day that my son was and she he didn't quite admit it but he said something and it was funny because he defended the person because that person was like it, it's it's um that person came into his life at a very dark time and became his friend and that's very confusing for a boy, right? This is my friend. I trusted this person. This person cared about me, and yet this person molests you, and you, he didn't want the family to be broken up. So then that's a twisted thing. Am I gay? Am I gay? Like, what's wrong with me? Why would I do that? But that's not the truth. The message is, it's the same thing as that, um, that syndrome where, Stockholm syndrome, where a kidnapper will take someone. They kidnap them, and they're holding them against their will. And yet, when it comes to the police coming, they defend them because they've they fucked their mind. They take care of them, they're doing this, but they have held them against their will. And it goes on like this and, and, and it messes you up. So in all this time, my son would never admit it, right? He would never admit it. But when it happened, when the family broke apart, he was angry at my daughter for destroying his family. What was the most important thing to him was a sense of family. And in as a child's mind, here this man was nice to him, was good to him, helped him, you know, played basketball with him, um, was a cool guy, you know, everyone liked him. He'd go camping, he'd go hiking, he'd go, um, we have, we have canoes and we did all kinds of really cool things. He taught him how to play the guitar, all these things that, that this guy was, right? And yet he molested his little sister and in all reality probably molested my son. Sorry, it's hard for me to talk with this frozen mouth. See, there's a message. It's hard for me to talk with this frozen mouth. These are things that come out that can't come out it's frozen for me 
frozen in fear. I don't want to face him. I don't want to admit this. Because then you think in the back of their mind, what if they say, oh, you liked it? You liked it or you would have stopped it. And that's what my son said about my daughter. You know what? If, if he was doing that, why didn't she stop it? Because she was a little girl. Why didn't I stop this dentist from hurting me? Remember, this came up for a reason. Remember, I said, why did this happen to me? This is why. Why did I allow this person to physically harm me? Because he was in a position of authority. I'm a, I'm a grown-ass woman. I'm a teacher. And yet I sat there and let him hurt me. Because he was, I felt, an authority figure. We all do it. We all have this thing where we're, we're raised in a society where we have to ask permission. We're raised to ask permission, right? And if this person comes to you as, a, as an authority figure, it's not your fault. It's their fault. It's their shame. They will carry that shame and karma will come back to them. They will have to live with themselves for the rest of their life. They will never be able to undo that damage that they have caused you. They may feel sorry for what they have done, but they will never be able to undo do that damage but you can lay it to rest don't let them have that power over you and don't blame yourself for something that you were not responsible for having happen okay and no one's gonna think less of you it's in your own mind and that's how they get away with doing what they do because they're they're hoping that you're gonna be afraid to tell because remember the ones that have your power you give them their power and when you take your power back you realize you're the one that had the power all along the power that they have is the fear that they instill in you. That if you speak, no one will believe you. Or someone will think less of you. Or someone will say you liked it. Or you're gay. Or you would, whatever the situation was. Right? And the power is, in them, is they, they hold this, this, this authority over you. Right? When in all reality, you don't need them. They need you. They're nothing without you. You're the one with the power. You take your power back. Fuck them. They've already done this to you. Don't let them continue to damage you and don't you let them have your power. And don't you give them your power every single day by having that experience continue to push away from you what you desire and need and deserve, which is love, which is actually sexual expression in a proper way. There's nothing wrong with that. And maybe the mother was trying to protect this child that had been hurt right? and didn't want, and, and sometimes we overprotect our kids because of that. We can't do that either. We can't do that either. We just have to let them know that they are loved and we're so sorry that that happened to them. And sometimes the parents carry the guilt. I, I allowed my kids to be very disrespectful to me their whole lives because I felt so guilty about what had happened to them. They didn't ask for that person to be brought into their house. That was my choice. But in all reality, see, I was blaming myself and it wasn't my fault either. So the mother who had that happen, who married the person, who had that happen. It's not your fault either. It's not your fault. It's the fault of the one who did it. It's not your fault. So you don't blame yourself. Oh, wow. So for those who chose the hummingbird, I'm going to get so emotional this reading. Oh, I have to turn it this way. Let's do it like this. <laughs> the message is love. Now what you're looking at is a lily pond, right? And you see the colors, the divine masculine, happiness, yellow. And you see the passion or the bloodline or to me, I, I just heard bloodline, right? This is a family situation. This is a very deep, deep, muddy, murky situation because lilies live way down. Oh, my cat Lily that just died. Okay. Lily, lilies have to struggle through the mud to get to the surface of the water. It's a long, hard climb to get through that murky, like, our, like what I grew up with, right? We finally get to the surface of the water and that's where we're reaching for the light. We're constantly reaching for the light and that's where we finally bloom. And when we reach the surface, when we get to the light, that's where the love is. That's where the yellow, I mean the green, is for love and healing and growth. And then, and then the sadness, this blood, I, I look at this blood and to me it's like spilling the blood of, of an innocent one. It's, it's, that's what you've done. That's what they've done. And yet now it's come up to the surface. Everything is there. It's exposed. You can see it. And there's still the ability to grow. And there's still the ability for happiness. It's your choice to stay down there, stuck in the mud, or to continue to reach for the light, knowing that you can do whatever you set your mind to. You are capable and you deserve love. 
And the message in this card says, a beautiful relationship will soon develop. This is a relationship that's gonna grow and grow for many, many years. So many blessings come from this beautiful relationship. And Spirit's asking you to savor every single second that you spend together. Because that's what's gonna keep this love, this passion growing. And look how it spreads. And the healing that's going to result from these two coming together. The growth and the blessings when, when you can turn whatever tragedy there was into lessons where you can help others. Love is a magnet. When you come from a place of love, you can't help but draw love to you. And if you are in a relationship already, the message for you is this relationship is going to deepen. But it only happens when you are deep and open with your love with one another. You share your sadness. You share your sorrows and your fears and your worries and your doubts. You express all of your insecurities to your partner. That will find your relationship growing and being strengthened. Wow, freaking amazing. Remember, hummingbird, you will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself and others, but you will because you are magic. You are able to, you are the bird that's able to fly backwards, fly standing still, go up and down. You are aerodynamically not supposed to be able to fly. You're, you're aerodynamically incorrectly built according to everything. And yet you have, you can do these amazing feats. So somebody who has these issues or these hangups or you're not able to do, yes, you will. You will accomplish what no one else thinks you can and even what you don't think you can. Look at the rainbow behind me. As long as you focus on love. And that was the beginning of this reading, right? This situation says to come from a place of, of love, come from your heart, come from your feelings and understand. I asked my twin years ago when we very first connected again, when he found me in Sedona, I, I, I said to him, I feel like you've been hurt. Has someone hurt you? And he said, no, nobody hurt me. And I knew immediately somebody had. Of course, how, of course I know that. He's a mirror to me, right? We've all been hurt in many, many ways. And the only way that it stops us is if we don't learn from it and, and, and not let us stop us from moving forward as long as we keep moving forward in the light. Don't hide your truth in those family trees, right? In the family tree, there's a deep, dark secret. It's the shame that the family carries. You know how many families carry those secrets? And it wasn't their shame. It was the shame of the one, who, the, the rat, the coyote, who escaped out, out, out the back end, where the kids were playing. Yeah, you're a big, strong one, aren't you? Preying on children, right? Yeah. And if you were to go, it's interesting, I've watched situations where these ones have grown and they've effaced their accuser and sitting before them is this frail, frail old man, just a, just a shell of nothingness. And the one standing in front of them, strong and beautiful. And yet they've been in fear of this frail, disgusting human being who did that to them. Doesn't mean that you can't be forgiven, but I'm sorry. I have a hard time with that right? What you did to my children. <sighs> my daughter still has a problem with me. It, it caused a distance between us because she couldn't believe that her mother didn't know somehow. Well, I'm here to tell all of you adults who are blaming your mom or your dad, because it could be a woman who does this. Take a beautiful child and molest you. And it's your first sexual experience. And guys are like, oh, that's, you know, Mrs. Robinson bullshit. That's a predator. That is a predator. That's not okay. So your aunt raped you as a child. You are too young to be in, involved in something like that. It's not okay. It's not okay. And I'm here to tell you, I didn't know. I had no freaking clue. If I had known, I would have ripped his nuts off myself. I made him confess to me and he did, but I had no clue. And in the back of my, my mind, my daughter just can't comprehend that somehow I didn't know. And our relationship is damaged because of him. So he not only damaged my children, he damaged our relationship. And my daughter's going to have to get to the place where she works it through and, and stops blaming. And, and I've tried to talk to her and say that, you know, you give your power to him every single day. Anytime that this, her husband goes to kiss her, her husband who's beautiful and wonderful to her, every time he goes to kiss her, she has flash. And I said, you're giving him your power. She needs to go to counseling, but she fights it. 
I don't know, you know, you have to work it through your own way. I guess you'll do what you're gonna do when you're ready to do it. But this is how I can help, is by speaking it out, right? She says, what happened to me was different than what happened to her. Yeah, because the person who did it to me was a stranger. So I was loud and obnoxious and, and told the whole world, of course, no one believed me. No one believed me, no one even listened to me. My grandmother swept it under the rug. She knew what he had done. I said, call my dad. I called my stepdad in. Okay, so that person that did this to the one may not have been the stepfather. Maybe the stepfather was the one that saved them because the person who, I'll tell you who did it to me. It was my uncle's wife's, and it wasn't even his wife, it was his girlfriend at the time, my uncle's wife's father. I'd never met this man, he had a tugboat. It was cool, I wanted to go down in the tugboat. My cousin and I went down to the tugboat, my uncle and his wife, I don't know where they were, up somewhere on the dock, and I was staying at my grandma's house. And I went down, into that place and I was always in dresses when my when my my stepfather when he married us married the family um, I was taken out of the forest where I always hung out right and I was put into a dress I was always in a dress so I was in a dress and now all I remember is this man he had a beard and a pipe and he looked like my real father but he wasn't okay remember I said someone who looked like someone else so he looked like my real birth father, which is the man I'd never met at this point, which is really intriguing. I didn't meet that man until I was 18, but he looked like him. So he was a captain. He was a skipper, right? And all I remember was he sat me up on his lap and I blanked it from then. All I know is I screamed and I was running and I was, had to climb stair, these, this ladder to get out of this, where we were down in this boat. And I went running down the, I was screaming, 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 running down the, um, the walkway of the, of the marina. And I got to the, uh, to the front and I'm screaming, screaming, call my dad, call my dad. I'm asking for my dad, get my dad here, get my dad here. And my uncle was like, what the hell's going on? And finally, I, I, my, my uncle took me home to my grandma's, took me to my grandma's house and my dad and mom came and picked me up, but I didn't want to talk about it. But I, but I believed that my dad had rescued me and I talked about this and, and that was never discussed again. I believe my dad came to my rescue because I called him, right? My stepdad. And years and years later, I talked to my grandmother about it and I said, you know, what had happened to me and how she had called my dad and she said no nobody knew what you were talking about and she goes we we, we didn't want to make a big deal out of it we just told your dad to come get you and, and actually it wasn't my grandmother who told me it wasn't it wasn't my grandma my grandma was already gone it was my stepdad I said remember when that happened to me and you came to the rescue and he says what are you talking about and I told him and he said Sherry they never called told me anything and I said they didn't and he said no they just said you were upset and wanted to come home. And I never said anything to them and my parents never knew that that happened to me. So my parents weren't to blame. My stepfather wasn't the one who did it to me. I thought he came to my rescue. My grandmother knew what had happened to me. My grandmother knew and kept it quiet. I was shocked when that came out. How could my grandmother know that this one did this to me? I watched in my dreams when I started to dream with my twin, him as a little boy. He looked like he was about five years old and I watched what they did to him. I was hysterical. I sent him the dream and, I, and all he said back to me was that hurts my heart. I don't know who I was watching that happen to. I believed I was happening to my twin, but it could have been happening to my twin's father or my twin's mother. I don't know. See, I have to be careful with stuff like this, but all I know is it happened. Somebody was hurt, somebody knew, and somebody kept it quiet. And in my case, my grandmother kept it quiet didn't want my uncle and my mom and dad to get into it. My dad would have freaking killed that, killed them. There would have been a court and that, that's the thing. There would have been a trial. There would have been the police involved and they didn't want a big scene, right? So they kept it quiet. Why? Because my grandmother had been molested her whole life. Her father had raped all of her brothers and sisters, so much so that her sister, her older sister had a child by her father. There's a sick secret, yes. What if that is the case? Your mother was raped by your father and you were the child. Wow, now there's something wrong with you. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. They took her to a, to a, um, a faraway place and she, like a bad girl's school. She was sent away to have this baby and they took the baby from her and she was never able to have children again after that. It was my Auntie Jean, my mom's favorite aunt, most beautiful woman. 
but she was never ever able to have children after that. Probably an emotional or who knows what they did when this baby was born. I don't know. Maybe they took the baby from her. I don't know. Like, like, like aborted it. I don't know what happened. All I know is so many lives. And I said to my grandmother, why did you keep that a secret? And she said, it happened all the time. It wasn't mine. I said, what, why did your mother allow that? And she said, there was nothing she could do. She had seven children. She was in a farm out in the middle of Saskatchewan. And I said, I don't give a fuck. I would be walking with bare feet to get away from that monster. I, I lost everything and walked away from what happened from my home. I, I, I tr my, from everything. I left the country because of what that person did to my child. So I'm saying to my daughter, if I knew it would not have been allowed to happen, he would have gone to jail. I would have had it done with my own hand if he had lived. Right? So you think about all the things I'm saying. I know that this is resonating with a lot of people. So now we're going to go to the dragon because I have great respect for the dragon. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Because I got to tell you, for somebody who's been so deeply hurt, and I don't know if it was him or, or someone in his family, I, I, I know it was him, actually, and I don't know if it was this in this way, but I know he was. My twin has so much love inside of him. He's such a gentle, loving, safe energy. I would trust him with my life. Correct for neutrality on all levels. For those who chose the dragon, and I clearly did, Fluorite. I love fluorite. This is a beautiful crystal. I'm also looking at the card, first of all. This one that's in the jungle, right? Does this one feel trapped in that jungle? That one is a light. That one is a star. That one is a star, that beautiful one that lived in the jungle. There she is naked. She lived in the trees. Look at those trees. Why did I say jungle? It's interesting. This looks like a poinsettia flower. That, she's, a she's a star. She's beautiful and she's a star. And yet she looks very, very sad. She's leaning ag against that family tree. She is the tree. She is, she is the star, the root. She is he. He is the star. Feeling naked and exposed and vulnerable. Arms tied to that family tree. See? Tied. It wasn't your fault. It's never been your fault. There's nothing for you to feel shamed by. There's light right here on your, so, on your solar plexus, your, sense of so, your, your space of self-worth. You are very worthy. You are very beautiful. You've done nothing wrong. You need to know that. I'm going to tell you that until you believe it. And you tell yourself that until you believe it. So, fluorite. Let's turn this around. This is one of the crystals that I wear. Sorry about my toenails aren't clean. Not clean, but um, I chip them. So fluorite. I've got a lot of fluorite bracelets and necklaces. This has been one of the crystals that I've used quite a bit. It talks about the energy of, of this, these crystals. They have a vibration that they send out that shields. It can shield you from a negative influence or a negative person. That negative influence or that negative person is causing you to be emotionally imbalanced. So, as we said from the beginning, look at yourself. Know that you are surrounded by love and light. Look at the light right here. You are worth it. You are the star. You are protected. You weren't protected, but you are at this time. See the energy moving around you? You are not tied to that family tree. You need to trust in the protection that you are now receiving at this moment. Let go of your fears and concerns. Allow the healing to occur. The green is for healing, love and growth. That spirit is shining down upon you. Allow this to happen. Feel that moving through. Start focusing on the things that bring you happiness and joy. Stop focusing on the past. You are not tied to that family tree. You are not responsible for what they did. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a beautiful, beautiful soul. You are a star. You need to remember your true north. This is right between your third eye. And it's focusing on your heart. In your heart, you're a beautiful, beautiful one. You are loving and gentle and giving and nurturing. You need to tell yourself that and recognize that the spirit is loving you and healing you at this moment. Focus on the things that you want to do. Forget worrying about what everyone thinks that you should do. Don't care what other people think. You are safe now. You are loved eternally. And nothing at this moment is going to hurt you except for your own thoughts. 
So this is a time now. Allow the, the winds of the past to go away. That's just an old, filthy hole down there. It's disgusting and putrid, and you want nothing to do with that. Look at the winds blowing through the trees. Look at the beautiful blue. The blue is the color of truth. And the truth says, you are a star. You are loved. You are happiness. You are nurturing. You are goodness. You deserve the best. You owe nothing to this family tree that's held you back. You have a soul family. Focus on the growth and the love and the healing. You were once just a little tiny acorn when that happened to you. But now you've grown into a mighty oak the green man of the forest. Wow, so clearly this is to a man. I just said it. I'm sure it's to women as well, but this is focusing on a man, a beautiful man. Wow. This is an emotional reading. I had no idea this was going to happen here. Correct for neutrality on all levels. My acorn man. The green man of the forest. That's why I am so always want the forest. And here I am sitting in the bed of oak leaves, right? These are oak leaves. The mighty acorn was once just a tiny little seed, but he's grown strong. And still the past, the memories of the past can keep us feeling trapped and insignificant. We are not. Correct for neutrality for all of those who chose. So who have we done? We've done the dragon, we've done the hummingbird, and we're gonna do the amphitheater next because we seem to have an audience. The crows, the crow family is an audience. Interesting. Correct for neutrality. So I know that when I speak and I say all of these things and I tell all of these different stories, it's because it's going to go out like, like fingers and it's gonna spread and the words that are said are going to apply to many different people. And you will know by the feeling that you get what applies to you right? You will know who was it was that hurt you, who, and it doesn't even matter to focus on who was hurt. What matters is to focus on you're not that child anymore and you're not that little acorn. You are a mighty oak and that's just a disgusting, filthy, dirty place of refuge and there's no emotion coming out of that. It's dead and gone. It's the past. It's over. It's dried up. Don't allow that to be your emotions in your heart. Don't allow that, that one to keep keep you their victim keep you as their prey right now there is someone around you that is causing you to feel imbalanced that person is what you need protection from and spirit is telling you that now leave that place don't be ashamed don't be afraid if you are a grown man and you're seeking someone's emotional assistance or help or even financial maybe you need to leave a place that is that has that energy around you don't be afraid reach out correct for neutrality for those who chose the amphitheater you are being hurt acceptance okay Whoop. acceptance a lot of emotional water here a lot of tears spilled so much emotion the hair is literally connected to the pools of water. And yet, look, your third eye. But it's off kilter a little bit. You need to straighten out your thinking in something. You're not seeing something correctly. Look at the sun behind you, glowing, shining down upon you. Don't turn your back to your divine masculine. What's interesting is, are you turning away from your own divine masculine within you? The divine masculine is about forward movement. It's about determination. It's about aggression. It's about standing strong. You've turned your back on that. Are you feeling weak? Are you someone who has turned away from your divine masculine, as in the men in your life, because you've been hurting? You're in a place of emotional upheaval. Don't turn away from the one that you love. Remember I said yesterday, that's why I'm not going to fake it. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm okay without you here. I'm not going to pretend that I don't miss you every second of every day. Why would I put on a brave face and let you think that I'm okay without you when I'm not okay? I'm not going to turn my back on my divine masculine. That would be thinking off kilter, right? Bring your third eye back into focus. 
It's okay to be emotional. At this moment, Spirit said it's very important to come from an emotional place, to come from a loving place, to speak your truth. Acceptance. So is there something that needs to be accepted? Oops, sorry, I'm putting these cards down so they don't fall all over the ground. Is there something that you need to accept at this time? Accepting things that you can't change. It's the key word for you who chose the amphitheater at this moment. You have the power to bring healing to a place in your life. This color, the green, is always its about love and healing and growth, right? The sun makes everything grow. There's love around that sun as well. And you have got that light all around your crown. You have the power to bring balance and healing to an area of your life that's causing you concern for some reason. There's something about this that you don't want to accept. You need to accept things as they are. Don't try to change things that are beyond your power to change. If there's nothing that you can do about a situation, there's nothing that you can do. You have the power over the way you think. Focus on what you do have power on, right? You have power over the way you react. Maybe as a child, you didn't have power over what someone did. But at this moment, you have power over how you react to the outcome or whatever situation is you're in. We can't control another person, but we can control our attitude. Accept, accept things. I will control my reaction. I will control me. I'm in control of myself. I, I'm bringing to myself a sense of inner peace. That's where I need to stay. I need to find that accepting attitude. To me, the word is surrender. And it doesn't mean you have to surrender to things going wrong. It doesn't mean that you have to surrender to someone who's abusive. It just means surrender the fact that I can't control everything. And that's when, remember what spirit says, let spirit help, Lama. <laughs> that was my message, right? You can't make something happen. You can't make somebody understand before they're ready to understand. You can't make somebody heal before they're ready to heal. This message, even though I didn't choose the amphitheater, is clearly to me. Do you see the light shining? The arc right here, right? Look at the arc shining behind her. Accept the way things are at this moment. Bring yourself to a place of peace. Understand that the world is not against you, right? Whatever you have in front of you, make the best of it, make the most of it. It doesn't mean you have to give up your dreams or your hopes or the things that you're planning for. Spirit's just telling you there's a higher purpose to things. Trust that things are gonna work out in the best way for you and for the highest good for everyone involved. That's what we need to surrender, our fear. Trust that spirit has it handled. Spirit knows what's going on. Bring yourself into a place of fear. Into a place of fear, I'm so sorry I said that. Why did I say that? Bring myself into a place of peace. Release the fear, surrender. The Lama says, I gotta go there, I gotta go there. This is what I gotta do. I, gotta, I'm, I am somebody who needs to fix it. Ooh, ringing in my left ear, really strong. Ringing in my left ear. It literally took my hearing away and then ringing. When I, when I said that, I am someone who feels like I've got to fix it. It's not my job to fix it. It's not my job to fix you. It's not your job to fix somebody else. It's just your job to realize this is what it is. Oh my God. I know you won't be able to see them unless they come down here towards us. But right when I said that, it's not our job to fix someone else. Two hummingbirds flew together into the oak tree. Two that will accomplish what might seem impossible to themselves as well as others. Together they nestled, and they are still nestled up in that oak tree. You will accomplish, and you will not do it alone. There they go. Whoosh! Hello. Hello, you beauty. I know you probably can't see this one. If you can zoom in with your cameras, if you watch this on your cell phone. There it went. But two right? Accept things as they are right now. It's okay. Surrender to spirit. Spirit knows what you need. Remember I said Lama Totem. Oh, and there's the other one. I know you can't see it. I'm going to walk up to it because I want you to see something. I'll see, you'll see it when it moves. See the, the light pole and then the big tree and then the little branches at the top. The hummingbird is sitting on the tip of the branch. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. The other one is sitting on the branch over there on the edge of the oak. Okay? I know you can't see it. I wish that you could. I'm sorry you can't. The light is shining on the breast of the one sitting right there. It's talking. And the other one is right on the very edge 
outside edge of the branch. There's the green, 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 and just like a stick sticking out, and sitting on that is the other one. They're both just sitting. The couple that, come, that came together in the oak tree, one sitting up there, they're looking, there it went, there was the one, okay? And it spoke to the other, and the other turned its head. Let's see how long. But the message was, they're sitting. Hummingbirds move very quickly. See, now he's gone back up. He's looking at things from a higher perspective. They're listening, right? They went together to the oak tree. There's a lot of you. There's more than just those. There's another two that just went over there. There's a lot of you. There's one right here, see? Right on the edge. So there's, there's it, my, my message is, this isn't just happened to you. You're not the only person that this has happened to. It's happened to a lot of people. And you all have the ability. You all have the ability to accomplish what might seem impossible. You will overcome the odds. I'm gonna obviously post both the llama message. I, I, I mean, I can't do all of the hummingbird message because I know that YouTube won't allow me to, to put that much um, writing. They can't, they can't hold that much, but that was a beautiful message to me <laughs> and to you guys. There's so many of us. Remember I said this isn't just, it's not just about you. And I, I know that my twin probably, he's a very private person. And my gosh, I'm talking about a lot of things. I don't know the specifics ins and outs of what happened in their family. All I know is what's happened in my family. And I'm being shown certain things, right? And so I speak it. And sometimes people get very upset because they're, this is private. I don't want anybody to know that. And the thing is, that's what gives those predators their power is the privacy, is the quiet, is nobody speaking about it. When you speak about it and it's out, you're not carrying it inside anymore. There's nothing for you to feel ashamed of. You've done nothing wrong. You need to find a voice. It needs to be spoken. It needs to be expressed. And then all of a sudden, they don't hold that power over you any longer. The secret is out. There's a shameful family secret. There's a secret I don't want you to know. I don't want you to know. You'll think less of me. You know what, if somebody is gonna think less of you for knowing something, they don't love you. It isn't real love. And that's what you're afraid of. If they knew this about me, they wouldn't love me. If they knew this. Sometimes people are accused of doing things that they never did. And they can't prove it. So what do you do? How does it feel? How do you feel in the company of that person? How does your body react? Your body won't lie. If you feel safe with that person, you are. We're not talking about a little kid who can be manipulated, right? You trust your feelings. That one has got a green chest, love and healing. So that's the feminine one right there. She's very active right now. So that's me talking. Hummingbird is definitely one of my totems. That's the female. So the male was the one that was up in the trees listening. But that's a message. That's what I was going to say. That's the surrender. Remember I said that the llama people, they carry the weight of the world upon their back. I know my twin is one of those people. Carries the weight of the world on their back. And Spirit said, it isn't your job to carry it. Surrender it to Spirit. Let them carry the weight. It's not yours to carry. It's not yours to carry. Let it go. It's weighing you down. It's hurting you. Okay, so our last message that comes to us, it's going to be from the Crystal, oh, Crystal Oracle. So we've done the amphitheater. We've done the hummingbird. We've done the dragon and so now we're gonna do the waterway this this derelict defunct unused beautiful beautiful place look at this beautiful place this could be you look how beautiful this is can't you just imagine water running through it again emotional water beautiful water expression how fun the birds would come the ducks would come all the water birds they would love this the kids would play there's a little wading pond right here how beautiful is this? There's no reason for this to be left this way, like a ghost town. Don't allow yourself to be this way. Look at that broken glass. Even the grass, even the glass is green, healing. This is a place where drunks hang out. You don't want that. Break the bottle, stop drinking to, dump, to numb your feelings. Stop drinking, that doesn't help you, that hurts you. Most of the time, the ones that have done this have been drunk when they did it because even they knew it was horrible what they were doing correct for neutrality on all levels correct for neutrality I saw somebody drunk somebody was under the influence of something and woke up in bed 
the next morning with a man, and it was a man, but I will tell you, nothing happened because I was there. I also watched another person be drugged, <clears throat> and they woke up in the morning with another woman, and they didn't know what had happened. That woman lied. That woman pretended, but nothing happened because I was there. I watched it. I've been there for many of my friends, and I've seen things, and they've written to me afterwards and asked me, and, and I had my, one of my friends, in. Uh, he was an alcoholic, and he said, they said that I did this, and I said, you didn't. You didn't. I watched it. I was there. You didn't do it. They actually put something in your, in your drink, and you, you blacked out. That's why you don't remember, because you were totally blacked out. They could tell you anything and make you believe it and trap you. That's how women will do that sometimes. They'll trap men, right? This was your baby. No, it isn't. It's your brother's. <laughs> it wasn't yours. I watched. I watched. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality. For those who chose the waterway, I did. I love, I love turning something like this back into something beautiful. I love that. I told you. The plants that look like they aren't going to make it. They make it for me. They, I save them. They're beautiful. Mr. Rosewood is blooming. He's blooming. They're, they're gorgeous. I, 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 if I find a, a cactus and it drops a leaf, like this morning, I had one of my succulents that my girlfriend Julie gave me, and the leaves all fell off, and I said, oh, why did this happen? So I took them outside and I planted them in, in soil on their own. Maybe they broke away from that family tree because they were meant to grow on their own. So I took them and I put them in a different pot and I, and I put them, you know what? I put them around the base of the female um, black rose succulent, which is, which is a representation of me. So I would be now that mother nurturing those ones to grow on their own, right? And that's what spirit wants us to do. Take us away sometimes from the family and allow us to grow on our own. So for those who chose the waterway, one more message or one more shuffle, please, Father. No? Okay. For those who chose the waterway. Road night. Well, I will tell you right now, road night is, um, I was looking at my road night crystal this morning. I have to get my, my pendant repaired. The road night, I should turn you this way so you can, you want to see the sun? Road night is a soulmate stone. Of course, because it's the color of, of love, right? Road night. So when you focus upon that, it's not all pink, right? There's black in there. There's darkness. So for all of us, the same, right? There's dark and there's light. There's love and there's anger. We all have a mix within us. So road night, being that it is the stone of love, it's telling you you're very, very well along the way on your journey to achieving your heart's desire, whatever that is. Spirit wants you to trust and keep an open heart and an open mind. There's so much potential. There's always potential. There's always the potential, right? This could remain this way. You could focus on that and want nothing to do with this. That could spoil this whole thing, right? With what happened there. Or you could fill this with emotional waters, beautiful, loving, and change a, a place that was once very sad into something very, very beautiful. You can do that. There's always potential. So there's potential for you. Remember, there's so many of you that have this potential. So many of you that have a desire. And Spirit says you are well on the way to achieving that desire. Don't be, don't be discouraged by any setbacks. Sometimes that just happens. You know, how bad do you want it? Remember the words that we got from the very beginning. Perseverance, endurance, right? Don't be discouraged by the setbacks. Whatever this project you have, whatever this relationship, whatever this is, keep focused on what it is that you wish to create. What, are the llama, what was the llama's message? <laughs> they are focused on what they want. You're not going to get my focus off of that. I am determined. I am determined. I know where I want to go. I know what is calling to my heart. I know what my soul is longing for. So you keep yourself quietly focused on what it is that you're trying to achieve, whatever it is that you're trying to create. Enjoy the journey, yes, right? Remember, we have to be accepted at the moment. Okay, well, like I said, people tell me to move on, you know, and, and I go hiking and I go camping and I go exploring and I go wherever. I'm seeing a dragon flying in the sky right there. The wing is out. But I still stay focused on where my heart wants to be. So enjoy the journey, right, along the way. There's going to be setbacks. Sometimes you're not going to have it happen immediately. Enjoy the journey. 
but keep a positive attitude. Hold an attitude of love. Have patience, have faith. Spirit said so many times today, and not for just one, for so many of you, you will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself, what might seem impossible to everyone else. You're not capable of that. What are you talking about? You're crazy. That's never going to happen. You're too this. You're not enough of that. You've never blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck that, man. Universe says that's wrong. That's wrong. You hold that. What you're, whatever it is that you were, whatever it is that you love, whatever it is that you want to manifest, whatever it is that you want to bring back to life that looks like it's just, it's been dead for years. This has been empty for years. Nothing, no water has flown through here in years. No birds have come to this in years. No Life has been going on here. This is just cobwebs and sadness and in, in control of what happened. The trees are breaking. But you are supposed to stay focused on whatever it is that you want. The universe is going to help you manifest whatever it is. Because for you who chose this message, and I did, this is your message. This is the super cool message. Something very wonderful is about to happen for you and for me. Yeah. And the family. Something is wonderful is about to happen for you and me and the family tree. So keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. This is about achievement. This is about your potential. This is about staying emotionally balanced. Remember, keeping, keeping your inner peace, right? Surrendering to spirit, knowing that you don't have to carry the weight of the world. Look what happened to you. That's what happened to you. The mighty oak right? You were once an acorn and you grew into that mighty oak. And what happened? The weight was so heavy that it broke. Sometimes you have to have a breakdown. Sometimes that's your soul and your body and spirit's way of telling you it's enough. You've been carrying the weight of the world on you. Maybe that's what the shame is. I had an emotional breakdown. Well, geez, you were holding so much in. You were trying to carry so much. There's only so much someone can do. You expected way too much of yourself. Instead of feeling shame about that, you need love. You need to accept that that was too much weight for you to carry. That's why you broke. Hello? You, if it broke, it was too heavy. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It means that the universe, your body, and God is telling you, no, you won't stop doing this. And so we're going to get you to the place where you have a freaking emotional breakdown to show you that was too much for you to carry. Also, you might have been trying to carry all of that by keeping it inside. Not allowing that to come out, right? I don't want anyone to know that. That's shame. Or maybe it was loyalty to that family. It was too much weight for you to carry. Too much weight. It wasn't for you to carry. It was for God to carry. So surrender it. Remember? Surrender. Accept it. And understand, if you keep yourself in this emotional place where you recognize that you deserve love, you deserve peace. You deserve to be with your lover. You deserve to be successful. You deserve to be free of the sadness and the weight of the past. You deserve to be free of everybody else's bullshit that they've put on to you. It's not yours to carry. Sometimes what happened didn't happen to you. It happened to your mom or your dad. And because of that, they have tried to protect you and they've sheltered you and they've kept everybody away from you. And they've told you to don't trust that one. Don't trust that one. I've had that happen. Because in all reality, it came from a place of love. It did. It came from a place of not wanting someone to be hurt. And yet you can't stop your children from growing and experiencing life, right? You can't stop a child from burning his hand. The only thing that's going to stop him is when he burns his hand. Ow! He's not going to put his hand back there. Because one day, eventually, he's going to burn his hand. One day, eventually, he's going to fall. One day, eventually, you're not going to be there. And what happens when you're not there? They have to be able to handle themselves. Don't put a weight of your family secrets upon them so heavy that it causes them to finally break because it's too much for them to carry. Keep an open heart, keep an open mind, recognize you deserve the best and something really fucking fantastic is about to happen. And because I said those words in French, <laughs> I might get a little note on my video. So I'm glad that I came here today. Uh, we didn't get the water we wanted, right? I wanted water. I didn't get the water I wanted. I didn't get the house that I wanted in Sedona. But there's a reason why. It didn't feel right to me anyway. Remember? It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. And it didn't happen. If it felt right. If it felt right. And it was meant to happen for me. I would be there. And I'm not. 
Because why? Because Spirit has got something better in mind. Something wonderful is about to happen and I'm excited and I'm just gonna hold on to that. So for everybody, even if you didn't pick the waterway, right? You're listening to this message. Everything that was said today applies to all of us. Everything that was said today, because you're listening to this, right? And you'll get, oh look, did you see the lizard? Did you see the lizard? Did you see him scurrying across? Maybe we'll get him to go across into the light so you guys can see him. Hey, hey Betty. Hey, where you at? Hey buddy. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Went a lot in there. Oh, you're in your little cave? Okay, well the lizard, that's a message to you, to hold on to your dreams. Lizard is also a message that now my daughter, she collects, she collects them, she saves them. It's not true for all lizards, but for all intents and purposes, the lizard says that you are able to detach from something in order to save yourself. Okay? Now, they're able to let a limb, let, let their tail go in order to save themselves. Now, remember, one of our messages says that you need to get out of where you are. Sometimes you have to let go of something in order to save yourself. Sometimes you have to let go of what you're holding on to in order to save yourself. Sometimes you have to let go of something you've put a lot of money and work and time and effort into in order to save your soul. Sometimes you've got to let go, right? That's what the lizard tells you to do. The lizard is about regeneration. The lizard is about um, metamorphosis, transformation. And that lizard was moving fast, right? The lizard also talks about feeling because like the snake, they feel the vibration as they go along the ground. The lizard is also a representation of the Anunnaki. My twin told me he was half Anunnaki and I said, yeah? And he scared, that scared me at first that he said that, that he was half Anunnaki because the Anunnaki are known to be the lizard people, the ones that come from dark and underneath, right? And I said, yeah, well, he's my twin, so he's half angel as well, right? And all, all lizard people are not bad. Some of them are, but some of them are trying to help. A lot of messages today. Look at these beautiful, beautiful cacti. Wow. Giant flowers. Desert flowers, right? They kind of look like the flower that was on the, on the card. The star. Follow your true north. Where is your true north? Your true north is here. Where does your heart say to go? Follow your heart. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go. It's getting kind of chilly, and I think my landlord has made pasta. He's like, he goes, is it lard or pizza or pasta? And all of it sounds fat to me, and I didn't get to climb anywhere and lose any weight, so um, this doesn't look as beautiful as, as where I wanted to take you guys today, but I think we got way more messages here. And I feel very, very um, grounded. Uh, I feel very grounded, and I feel very peaceful when I'm amongst the trees. I'm a tree hugger. I'm the original tree hugger. <laughs> I am. I grew up in this, so this is, this is happiness to me. Happiness to me is a tree. <laughs> All right, you guys, I love you. We'll talk again soon. Peace.